Cheers! Welcome, Welcome to, to Movie, Movie Bitches. Bitches. Welcome to Summer Camp yeah. 2022. Woo! Retro Review episode 60. It's almost like we planned it. <laughs> <laughs> Surely not. No. But perfect timing. Tonight we're reviewing Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion. Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion. By special request from Jason, dedicated to Benji. Thank you both for watching and being fans and supporting us. Yes! Speaking of... This summer camp is brought to you by our patrons on Patreon, like Jason, and we picked only the campiest ones to do for summer camp. Yes! Killing two birds, one stone! We gotta think of a new uh, adage instead of that. I don't like yeah. killing birds. Sure, no, we don't need to do that. <laughs> it's like a win-win. Woo! <laughs> 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 it's bad luck to kill a seabird. To kill a seabird. Yes, exactly. <laughs> It'd be even worse luck to kill two, two seabirds birds with one stone. <laughs> or your bare hands. That too. <laughs> That too. <laughs> I'm forgetting his name at this very, very, very moment. But mm -hmm. if the guy who directed Lighthouse. Uh -huh. and... Lighthouse? Is that what it was called? The Lighthouse. Okay. Yeah, I guess you're right. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Northman? If the guy who directed those directed the latest Batman, I oh. mean, it might be great. Well, right, because Robert Pattinson was in this The Lighthouse. Was, 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 yeah. You know. Yeah. Hmm. And he was dirty, but still. Anyway. We're talking about Romy and Michelle. Yes, we oh, are. Wait, well, second thing, second. Exactly. Shout out to our wine sponsor, Wink. Go to trywink.com slash moviebitches. You get $22 off your first month of wine. Also, shout out to all of our Patreon supporters, not just Jason. Thank you all for your support. $5 a month gets you early access. $10 gets you access to our viewing parties. So themes of summer camp that you might see. Color. Color. Music. Good music. Good music. Costumes. Costumes. Bright costumes. Gorgeous gowns. Yes, you, gorgeous gowns. You've seen that clip, gowns. right? No. Oh, really? Gowns? Oh my god, I can't wait to play it. Taylor Swift. Okay, great, uh, great gowns. Beautiful gowns. It's harder to say gowns than just gowned. It's because neither of those are words. That is not true. And that has been proven <laughs> false by our fans. Get right on out of here. <laughs> But yes, thank you so much, Jason, for making yes. us revisit this because yeah. it was a pleasure. Such a and pleasure. And thank you, Benji, for being friends with him. Yeah. Third things third, make sure to subscribe, share. Oh, now if Cher was in this movie, it would be kind of weird, but she'd I would be on board. Up, she'd show up as like um, the principal and it'd be a cameo. Yeah. And she'd just be like, welcome back to... T Tucson Rydell's High. Yeah, I don't know why I thought Westboro, Rydell, but... Westboro. I don't, I don't yeah. know what the fuck it was called. From Sagebrush High in Tucson. It yeah. wasn't a president's name. That's all I know. Okay. That's all I know. No, it was not John Adams High. <laughs> no. Chester A. Arthur. Middle school. Just a little diehard humor. Chester, Chester, Chester A. Arthur, let's say it again. Chester A. Arthur Elementary School? Well, if you haven't seen Romeo and Michelle. Oh, yes. High school reunion. Uh, obviously, go watch it. Yeah. Like immediately. Yeah, absolutely. Because this won't be that exciting if you don't if you love don't... it. Well, I mean, first of all, if you don't it. love it, then I mean, I'm not going to tell you to unsubscribe, but I feel like we're probably not a match. It's got my checklist. Okay. Makeover. Makeover, costumes, yep. road tripping, yep. female friendship. Yep. Uh, I mean, there's nostalgia for the 90s, which I mean is retroactively sure. accurate for this film, but you know what I mean? It's just <laughs> yeah. like, it's got it all. Yeah. Jimmy Garofalo, Alan Cumming, you know, it's just like... <laughs> Yeah, we're check, 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 check. check. So, so anyway, yes. Romy and Michelle. Michelle's High School Reunion, yes. the 1997 cult classic. Yeah. Although it did a good fair bit of business when it came out. Okay, yeah. I think. Gained momentum. Yeah. And it has stood the test of time. It really does. I mean, you know, it ended and I was like, you know, because I don't think I'd seen this for at least a cool decade. The 90s were a cool decade. They were a cool, well, were they? I don't know. Oh, I loved the 90s. I'm not saying that. I'm oh. just saying that I don't know if they were cool. What's, on, who's to say? Depends on your definition. Who's to say? Well, I think Janine Garofalo is fucking cool. Oh so. my God. I love her so much. I, I, we have to talk a lot about it. Should we talk about her now? I don't know if I can fully express how important Janine Garofalo was to my high school self. Yep. The fact that you could be that angry and funny. Yep. Yes. I didn't know you were living in L.A. Well, now that you know, will we be getting together a lot? <laughs> she was my ideal. She was my idol. Yes. It was like Christina Ricci was the middle school era. Good. And it grew Jan up into Janine. I 
love that. She's everything. She really she, is. She would show up in the 90s and be the best part of whatever it was that she Truth was Truth about cats and dogs. Well, that, I mean, she's the star of that movie and also the best part of it. But, like, the cable guy, right? Uh -huh. That movie, uh, uneven. Some people love it, some people hate it, whatever. What have you, we can all agree that her part in the movie is the best part. <laughs> Welcome to Medieval Times. I'll be your serving lunch, Melinda. Might I fetch you something from the barkeep? Dost, dost have thou a mug of ale for me and me mate? I'll be right back, my lord. I've never seen it. You've never seen You wouldn't like it, but her scene! <laughs> okay, great. At Medieval Times. Oh, I love it. Can I get a knife and fork? There were no utensils in medieval times, hence there are no utensils at medieval times. Would you like a refill on that Pepsi? Would you like a refill on that Pepsi? <laughs> Not to mention Wet Hot and, of you know, all the other things. Was that 90s? 2001. Yeah, okay. Oh you my know. god, okay. So, you know. Uh, wow. She shows up in Now and Then. Oh wow, Christina, Ricci, and her in this. Oh wow, they're in the same. It's all coming together. Love it. Now and Then brings everything together. I mean, my goodness, I went and saw Mystery Men in the theaters just for her. Mystery Men. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh boy! It's actually um, has aged. It's still not good, but it's okay. aged in a way that is more interesting now because it predicted so many things oh, about okay. like superhero movies. And oh. I would say it's almost a precursor to The Boys. I mean, not quite as dark as okay. that, but like it was very um, a different avant garde. Take. Eh, or no, just like before a, its a, time. Before its time. It was before its time. It's still not good. Okay. Um, but it was before its time. It has its moments. Great. It has its moments. And Janine's there. Anyway, yes, what were you going to say? I was going to say that after this movie, I was just like, fully holds up, 100% Rotten Tomatoes, yeah. A+, plus, love it, everything works. I'm trying to think works. if there was one thing. The, the only thing that rang a little dated or ooh to me was just how much focus was put on being thin. Fair. And that's fine, whatever, it's a product of its time. But it did make me, like, as as a going back in time and, and watching this as a younger adolescent, I was just like, oh, that's one of the reasons we were all so incredibly obsessed with being thin. Mm. Like, it was just, it was just right, part it, of the conversation. It, it wasn't even a question. No, it reinforced <laughs> that people got bullied for being chubby. You know, even though I had to wear that stupid back brace and you were kind of fat, we were still totally cutting edge. I love it when it's hamburger day. Uh-huh. Right, I was like, wait, was she chubby? Uh, like, when she had that right? chubby suit on, I was like, was she chubby? Oh, I didn't even know. I didn't even know. I didn't. But it, there was a lot of like, oh my God, I didn't well, and then eat I think, for a week. And, right. You know. Did you lose weight? Actually, I have been trying this new fat-free diet I invented. All I've had to eat for the past six days are gummy bears, jelly beans, and candy corns. I hate to say it, but I really think that we should lose some weight. If we want to lose a pound a day, we have to burn twice as many calories as we eat. You got so thin by then. Oh, I know. I was so lucky getting mono. That was like the best diet ever. Oh, God. I've been killing myself for eight days, and I gained a pound. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm having a, uh, I'm a trauma. I'm having a, is it a, tra a trauma. This movie is about trauma. <laughs> anyway, it was fine. It was fine. It was all good. It was all good. No, but I do get that. That is fair. It brought me back to a less accepting place in sure. my adolescence. Sure. And I was like, oh, it was there. It was the only thing that I went okay. Their workout oh, shoes. Oh, their workout outfits. I mean, right. All of them. To oh the tread, God. the heels on the, the treadmill. The heels on the treadmill. Oh, so Okay. And then to open the locker and have the other heels uh, that they have to change back uh, into. And I gained a pound. That's impossible. Did you deduct 16 pounds for your shoes? When she weighed herself? Oh, yeah. Did, did you, you subtract 16, 16 pounds, pounds, pounds for your shoes? Because I thought about it. Yes. It's like, she better take, you know, those, take shoes those shoes off. off. That's yeah. going to be a big... Okay, great. I'm glad. I'm glad you were there for me. Thank you, movie. But the whole cast. I mean, obviously, Mira Sorvino and Lisa Kudrow. And Mira Sorvino's uh, accent work. The... It's almost Holly Hunter. It the, is almost the, Holly Hunter. The talking out of the side of her mouth and this deep kind of, yeah. hi, I'm Romy. It's Romy. Romy White. It's Harry. not quite Valley Girl and it's not like. Well, I, I assumed it was Tucson, no? Oh, you, you would be the one that would know. I mean, do I talk like that? No, I mean, I don't, to me, Tucson so Were doesn't... you having some trauma about be, Tucson? Well, no, I was actually laughing about it because I think maybe one shot in this movie is from Tucson. I was really appreciating like in the high school scenes. Uh-huh. It was clearly like the valley Southern or something. Southern California. It was, yes. You know what's remarkable? Is how much England looks in no way like Southern California. 
but then they would put like a little saguaro just in just, like oh, they're, they're, the background of the set that was probably clearly like fake. in a sandbag like they're just scooting it around it wasn't real like it was not a oh, real yeah. plant it was just like here's a saguaro it's tucson and i was like no it's not tucson yeah it made me laugh a lot now you've seen hamlet too right yes okay <laughs> i was like hamlet as well like mm. like also also but of course i've seen hamlet okay too. good thank god tucson where dreams go to die uh, I found out in what the viewing the party that. What the fuck is your problem? <laughs> what is your fucking problem, man? That's my favorite yeah. part of of Good. Hamlet too. Good. Yeah. Um, uh, that Brian has not seen it, so <gasps> we have to rectify that. Oh my god. Yeah. Anyway, yes. Anyway. Tucson, Arizona. I really appreciated so many things about this movie, obviously. Mm. But one of them is the pacing. It's not slow, let's say, but it, it takes its time. But the timing mm. of their delivery is all perfect. Mm -hmm. The scenes have time to breathe. You're not like you. Everything lands, though, because of it's really well done. Yeah. So the director, uh -huh. David Mir Mirkin. M Merkin. Well, I think it's, it's with an I. Merkin? Isn't that how Merkin is? Is it Merkin with an E? Merkin? I don't like know. Like what we're Merkin with? That's oh. What, is that what we're talking about? I meant like a Merkin bag. Birkin bag. A Birkin. I went I Merkin. Know, Merkin. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. In my head, yeah. I conflated both Merkins and Birkins. Uh -huh. And now I kind of want a Merkin Birkin. <laughs> so you can keep stuff in there in case you need it later? Yeah. I'll just say David Mirkin. I don't know. I don't know. It's M I R K I N. Great. The only other thing of note that he has directed. Okay. Heartbreakers. It makes oh, perfect sense. Doesn't yeah. it make perfect sense? Yeah. Yeah. I was just like, oh, these companion pieces. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Female friendships and mother daughter. You know, relation. Yes. Female relationships. Yes. Fabulous costumes. Really, really funny timing. Yeah. Great plotting. Yep. Interesting characters that are not just mm -hmm, like typical, mm -hmm. like vapid, whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. Love it. And the costume designer, Mona May. Oh, well, okay. Did Clueless. Oh my God. And, well, for me personally, it was exciting. Did Three Ninjas, which was a very important film to me yeah. as an elementary school student. Watched it quite, maybe I watched it, might have watched it more than Home Alone. Wow. Might have. And I've watched Home Alone about a million times, so. Did you watch it more than Howard the Duck? Yes. <laughs> definitely more than. I, I liked Howard the Duck quite a bit, but, but Three, three uh, ninjas, ninjas was wow. A lot. Is it like behind me? I was trying Why to figure out. Why do you keep out? looking? I was keep looking because I, I could have no. sworn I had seen it, but maybe not. No. No. I don't think but so. also, uh, Howard the Duck is behind yes, you. Yes, that's true. And so then uh, that true. was, yeah. For Wedding Singer. Oh. Never Been Kissed. Oh. Xenon. I. Two, oh, the sequel, and Xenon Squared? Cubed? Cubed? Three, yes, of course, cubed. Z3. Yes. Z3. I will say, neither of those are particularly good. I forget which one. Xenon 2, the I, sequel, I don't think I've seen either of them. might be the one where aliens show up. But how are the costumes? How fabulous would this look on me? Can I borrow it? <sighs> They already had the basis of the original. Exactly. We can't give that one to you, Mona May, but we can give you Clueless. <laughs> Absolutely. And Never Been Kissed. Oh and my weddings. God. And Three Ninjas. Yes. I feel like Never Been Kissed, there's like a pink dress that sticks out in my mind. The prom one? Which yeah. It looks like tinfoil. That kind yeah. of reminds me of... Well, it's gaudy. I mean, in Never Been Kissed, it's gaudy on purpose. Yeah. yeah. terrible, but yeah. it also is very memorable. Yes. These are gaudy and great. Yeah. That'd be a good name for a store. Gaudy and Great. Yeah. I do like that. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. Mona May also did the costumes for vamps. Oh. I don't know why that fucking movie comes up so frequently. Well, because, you know. Even though we hated it. We hated it. I, I would almost be interested in re-watching it. No. no. Pathetic. Pizza guy. Pizza guy. It wasn't good. It was really bad. Someone said it was good to you. You made me watch it. Wow. I watched it and said, this is terrible. Now you have to watch it so we can talk about how bad it is. <laughs> so that was like three degrees of... But like, I think if we, repro if we like approached, approached it, it again with a real camp lens... Maybe... I don't mm, think so. I don't think so either. Because, you know, spoiler alert for the rest of this season of summer camp. Oh. <laughs> like... I rewatched Moulin Rouge with a camp lens. No, no, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. 
We'll talk. We'll talk. Okay. We're, You'll have to tune in later in the season. We're, we'll talk about it. <laughs> so, I mean, yes, obviously, Lisa Kudrow. Holy shit. I mean, another person who is generally the best thing about the thing that she's in. Badgley, Mishka, Courage, Cardan. Can I keep going? Yes, I can. De La Reggio, Anne Kamali, LeBron, Bill, Blas, Bron, Lowe, Cavalli, Betsy Johnson, Anna Slee, I see me in Givenchy. I mean, you know, she's always great, but you know, it's like a, a Janine where, at least for me, it was like, Janine Garofalo's in this film, I will watch it. Right. Lisa Kudrow? Lisa Kudrow's in this film? I will I'm, watch it. I'm here. Alan Cumming is in this movie? I will watch it. Sign he me up. He doesn't have much to do in this movie, but he still makes it work. I don't, I loved it. He has the like prosthetics. Oh my god. And he looked like the he, Vivienne. He looked like he had got his Twilight makeup on. It was a very strange. Is he in Twilight? No, but oh. I would love it. <laughs> I'm quite excited for you to experience Twilight. <laughs> yes. Because you know nothing, correct? I have now, I mean, I've seen, you know, here clips and there, here and there, but, but like basically. Obviously, I know there's vampires and teams and glittering in the sun. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> He looked like Jackson Rathbone from Until We Meet Again. He had this yes. weird, pasty, yes. extra face on top of his face. Yes. And it was very upsetting because <laughs> I find Alan Cumming to be very attractive. Sure. And I was like, what? I'm upset. Yeah. I'm upset. Oh my goodness. So we start, we're in Venice, California. We start off and they're making fun of Pretty Woman. And then, then I Or just, are they? Or are they? <laughs> I just get really happy when they finally let her shop. I just get so excited when they finally let, let her, her shop. shop. Relatable. <laughs> it's such a good line. No, it was funny that they didn't play Big Mistake. Huge. Yeah. Aw, poor thing. Look, they won't let her shop. Yeah, like those sales girls in Beverly Hills aren't bigger whores than she is. <laughs> I know. Well, that's like the iconic part of that whole, like, culmin it's like the punchline right. or whatever. But, yeah. you know, it's fine. Love their apartment. Wish we'd spent sure. more time there, honestly. I get that. Yeah. Like, I want to see the studio where they're making the clothes. Mm. <laughs> oh, I have nothing to wear. We don't even have time to make anything. I mean, I love that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. There's a whole thread line. I mean, the, the writing is really excellent yeah. where, like, everyone has a backstory. I mean, literally a backstory because they go back to high school. But, like... It's based on a play. Love it. Called Ladies Room or The Ladies Room. And Lisa Kudrow did it, on uh, like... On stage. Oh. So she was reprising. Wow. I would love to see uh, the two of them come back for a Romy and Michelle's 30th high school reunion or whatever it is. No? I'd be wary. I'd right. be wary. It would have to be done it's, really it's well. It's not a no. I would be wary. I guess it was just like, they were so fun. I would love to hang out with them some yeah. more. Yeah. Get David Merkin back. Sure. Merkin. Merkin. Heard this is American American. Um, get him back, maybe. Yeah. And um, really get a good script together. And right. I, I wouldn't say no, but I would be. I would want it done right. Uh, absolutely, that yeah. goes without saying. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Well, there is a sequel oh. that's technically a prequel. Oh. Where Catherine Heigl plays Romy, and the woman who directed or who wrote the play directed the movie. Apparently, it's very bad. It sounds terrible, but also like, how could you do a prequel to something that takes place in high school and then 10 years later? I mean, I think it just takes place in high school. I don't know, I don't know. Or right out of high school in the 10 years in the mm. interim. I don't oh, know. Oh, it's not about a reunion. It's about it's like Romy, Romy and Michelle, Michelle in yeah. Venice, uh, California. I don't know exactly. I, did, I just skimmed, yeah. skimmed it. Oh my God. Talk about a soundtrack that I played the fuck out. Maybe more than any other soundtrack. Wow. I was... It was this and Can't Hardly Wait. That was it. Not Clueless. Oh, Clueless too. Yeah, it was Clueless too. Damn. Wow. It was, just, it was a trifecta. It's a good, a good sampling. Yeah, 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 yeah. When um, No Doubt came on, I was like, oh. I'm back. I'm exposed and it's no big surprise. I've returned. Right? My Walkman is currently playing oh. I'm Just a Girl. And um, I am... Did I have that on in my, CD? I'm in my rollerblades. And I'm, oh well, because you could only make mixed tapes back then. Right. So I had, you know, like a mixed tape of all of the faves, but I did have this on CD. Okay. I was trying to remember, if, like, no doubt, and what with Tragic Kingdom might have been mm -hmm. one of my first CDs? Definitely. Okay. Definitely. I had a CD of it, but okay. then I would make mixed tapes of Of course, of all, all that you, you come on. And I would remember, like, recording stuff from the radio. Okay. Like, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Oh. Trying not to get the DJ in there. No. Record. Yeah. And then yeah. you go, Wait, let's dress out. I'm waiting. Yeah, very that. <laughs> Kids these days don't get it. No. 
They're just Spotify. Turn up the volume you know. so you can get it. Yeah, the nice and loud. Did it work that way though? I don't know if it worked that way. Maybe I imagined it. Yeah. Anyway. So we meet with uh, Romy Michelle 10 years after high school. Oh my God, it's been 10 years already? What? It's been 10 years since high school? God, where have I been? I'm stumped. Where? <sighs> anyway, are you going? I'd rather put this out in my ass. God, someone should make a cigarette you could smoke in between class. <sighs> what a waste. Thank you. I really appreciate that because I'm not a human being or anything. Turd. Well, and the cowboy mm -hmm. is a little baby Justin, Justin Thoreau. Thoreau. Didn't look like him at all. I mean, like, I he, knew he was, was still very attractive. Oh, he's always been attractive, but it did not look like him. Like, I was like, oh my God. He's one of those people that like aged into his face. Mm, yeah. He looked generic in this. Sure. And he's so specific now. Yeah. I was like, oh. His little Marlboro Man act is... <laughs> it's very silly. Very silly. And I love this conceit of going in and out of the yearbook. Okay, we're tra yes. transitioning in and out. It was such a great visual. It really was. I mean, I was laughing. I was like, oh, thank God we had that aerial shot of all of us at the ten lunch table that day. <laughs> you know, whatever. Fuck off, Toby. I want to interview you too because I think it would make a really interesting article for the roundup. Oh, Toby, fuck off. Okay. When you tell me to fuck off, it really hurts my feelings. feelings. I hurt your feelings. Cameron Mannheim being oh my God. in high school really got me. Yes. Cameron Mannheim just being that excitable journalist. I just want to want to interview you guys for the paper. paper. Oh, fuck, fuck off, off, Toby. <laughs> oh, Toby, fuck off. Okay. We're transitioning in and out of the yearbook, and this is when we get to meet the A group. Yes, including. Including Elaine Hendricks. Yes. Meredith Blake. Oh my god. And when she comes back in her lesbian chic vibes, I was oh my god. Her, like, so into it. Sharon Stone, Diane Keaton, white suit, yes. dark lips. Hello. Obviously. But it was also very like Kristen Stewart vibes with like the short hair and the, you know. Famously Meredith Blake, but also she's the, um, well, the second iteration of Alexis Carrington on the new Dynasty. Oh, that's right. Because they had a little... A recast moment. I can't even explain how insane it is, the recast moment. I won't even bother. It was involved plastic surgery and a fire and lots of things. And um, anyway. Love it. Anyway. <laughs> she's fabulous. She is fabulous. Love her. Yes. This flashback to, you know, them when they're nerds. This movie was such a warm hug for a little nerdy, angry uh, high schooler in me. It yeah. was so great. I feel like you were also that type of person that was kind of just ahead of their time <laughs> where it's like you know you were into like these movies or whatever that now everyone's finally talking about you know and it's like oh 20 oh, years mean, later Romy Michelle specifically? or any of it or but like you know what I mean where it's like sleepaway camp of it all or whatever sure, where sure, it's sure. like oh and then 30 years later everyone finally now <laughs> exactly. retribution I think a lot of that had to do with I had older sisters older sure. co specifically older cousins who were like you want to see some cool fucking weird shit? I'm going to show you some cool fucking weird, weird shit. shit. And that was just like, show me all the cool fucking weird shit. <laughs> but also that is what it's about too, where it's yeah. like stuff that's different. It's not like what's cool today because it's cool. It's what's guess, different and unique or thoughtful. and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess the, the thing was I related to being like an outcast with them, but I never wanted to be part of the A group. So that I didn't relate to because I was like, but they suck. I always just thought we were having the best time. <laughs> I was very Michelle in that way. Like, wait, but like, why would we give a fuck what they think? Yeah. High school was a blast. Like, sure, they were jerks and I didn't like them, but right. I wasn't like trying to be them. Like, right. What? Yeah. Did you want to be them? Oh, no. Yeah. I, I think that's such a great message of this movie. Yes. But yes, we flash back to prom. But it seems like prom isn't as big a deal anymore. Is that just my perception? Because I'm an elderly woman now at this point. Possibly. Uh, it seemed, like even when I, we went to prom, it seemed like less of a big deal. That than is very true. 80s, well, 70s. Yeah, I think what's happened is that there were so many movies about how prom wasn't the be all end all. Right. That then like there's people been like, enough generations of people that have grown up being like, yeah, prom's fucking lame. Like, what, who cares? It's a dance? I don't know. <laughs> it's Their Madonna outfits were not lame, though. They were not lame. Yeah, because we're the only ones that weren't dressed like we're going to a hoedown. Okay, this is so typical. Of course we're like the only ones who don't look like we're going to a hoedown. Wishing her hair. Oh my god. Ow! Oh, oh, that hurt, well, it but looked it looked great. great. It looked really great though. <laughs> you know what else this reminded me of? I guess particularly Lisa Kudrow mm. was Girls Just Want to Have Fun. Oh yeah, that's a movie that I've seen but did not watch a lot. Though. I didn't watch it a lot, but it's great. And mm -hmm. Helen Hunt. Yeah, Sarah... Miss uh, Jessica, Jessica Parker. Parker. 
And like, I think Shannon Doherty plays her little sister. Yes. For some reason, I was confusing it with um, She's All That, where little Sookie Stackhouse. Yes, Anna Paquin. Anna Paquin plays yes. the sister. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sookie. Sookie. Did you watch that till the end? Sadly, yes. Wow. I know. I believe I quit midway through season three. And that was probably the right place to stop, you know, honestly. Season two, probably. It, uh, it gets After so... the min ad. Season, the main ad, oh God. No, that was great, because it was so insane. It was so insane. And then it just... Really... And then it was like, now we're really, yeah. Once the fairies came up, it was like, no, this is, this is too much. Like, anyway, we can't we can't get into True Blood right no, now. No, we cannot. We don't have enough time. I have a friend who started watching it all when she was quarantining for COVID, and I was like, you know what? That's a choice. Season one's great. Well, sure. It's just like fever and yeah, I don't know. and true blood just on a marathon seems like uh, real crazy making. Yeah. But yeah, you know, live in that weird moment for a second. Why yeah. not? Sometimes I like to watch really fucked up weird shit when I'm sick. Sure. Got nothing else to do. Right. You're just kind of like... some Frank Henlauder movies. Come on. It'll be great. <laughs> You're already kind of delirious. Exactly. What's yeah. going on? Uh, I think this is art. I love it. <laughs> you know, it's great. It's I great. think this is art. Good. So, quick commercial break, and we'll be back with a lot more Romy and Michelle. With the reunion. Oh. This was also reminding me that I need to rewatch Gross Point Blank. Ah, uh, yeah. Another movie I watched. A soundtrack that I listened to mm. a lot, actually, yeah. That was the cool soundtrack. Uh, okay. Because it had, like, you know, more obscure... I feel like, for whatever reason, I don't think I w listened to a lot of soundtracks growing up. I m almost exclusively listened to soundtracks growing up. I love that. <laughs> I mean, it certainly is a nice way to get, like, a mixtape made a for you, tape, essentially. Right? And yeah. you, get, you get a visual association. Oh, sure. That's when that's happening. I enjoy this, you know. <laughs> yes. Um, also, I love this, um, you know, they're talking about, oh, I wonder, they're looking back at the pictures, I wonder why he was never into me. And then there's just this YMCA <laughs> cue. God, I wonder why he never liked me. This is camp. This is camp. <laughs> They're like the, the heads of the theater camp. Yeah, the it, theater was, group. it was very wet hot, too. Yes, very that. God, that movie's great. Great. Top five. Yeah, wow. I mean, wow. fight me. I, right? Sure, I guess. Yeah, that's just a big statement. Oh, mm. young Billy. I mean, it's the same, I guess. But f particularly at the prom. Mm. was really giving me Kyle MacLachlan vibes. And I think it was probably the just hair. the hair. It was the hair. Now, if Kyle MacLachlan would, was playing Billy. Oh my God. <laughs> sexy monster. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, sexy monster. I think it might be too much. I think it'd be perfect, actually. Oh, it would be perfect, but like it might be like too much. Too much. Um, raw charisma How and sexuality. How old would he be then, though? Who cares? Lisa Kudrow was like 38 when this became out. Really? I, mean, I don't know if it was 38, but she was always the oldest on Friends. Mm, and interesting. so she was definitely not 28, let's say that. Right. She, they're supposed to be. They were supposed to be 10-year reunion, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You know what the most 90s thing that brought me back? What? In the whole movie. Okay. That Cooler Ranch Doritos bag. Oh my God. Oh my, I could, ta I could taste it. I literally was like, I know what that tastes like. Oh. Okay. I don't think that like one chip makes a difference. It wasn't even a whole chip. Yeah. Oh boy. That Cooler Ranch. That was my, that was my flavor too. Oh wow. We got, I remember there was a certain period of time, I think it was called Cool Melon Gatorade. Okay. Was like my thing, that my was, flavor. That was it. That, and there was a flavor of Sobe. Do you remember Sobe? No. The Sobe. I think it was made from like the Arizona iced tea people or whatever. There was like a remember, chameleon on it. Remember Arizona iced tea? Of course. I mean, that was... Especially growing up in Arizona. Yes. Yeah. That was your pride and joy. Wow. Like, oh my God, everyone's going to use that big handle. Remember you get that big gold handle of the iced tea? No. Okay. Anyway, I'm just remembering the, the line I think that my friends and I quoted the most was, Would you excuse me? I cut my foot before and my shoe is filling up with blood. And then she hobbles. Now, was that just a way for her to get out yes. of it? Okay, but then she really committed to the bit. Of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. It's filling up with blood. And it's filling up with blood, right? Oh my god, it's so good. I loved the cutting back and forth with the pictures, and the way that their commentary was kind of gave me, like, Elvira vibes of, like, mm -hmm. 
you know, the way she comments on movies or whatever. It was yeah, like yeah. a, there was an Elvira-ness to it. A similar... There was like a meta commentary. And a playfulness, yeah. a similar tone. Yeah. Oh my God, talking, speaking about the 90s. Yes. Remember Singled Out? Remember she goes to try out for Singled Out, the, the dating show that Jenny McCarthy hosted on MTV? Oh. Sorry, our cutoff is 25. Try oh, VH1. right. Try, try VH1. Oh, shit. Our cutoff is 25. Try VH1. The uh, journey begins. They got to get that car to go if they're going to drive to Tucson. <laughs> I, oh, can't, I have to give them all hand jobs. Oh, my God. Oh, Ramon. Ramon. You're Columbus and I'm America. Discover me, <laughs> Ramon. Oh, Ramon. Is that an earthquake? No, it's Ramon. Is that an earthquake? <laughs> no, it's Ramon. Oh. oh, Ramon, your penis is so powerful. Oh, I'm coming. Okay, get off me. <laughs> I'm coming. Okay, thanks. Get off me now. Oh, come on. You wanted it to be believable. You wanted it to be realistic. <laughs> That nightmare retail store. Oh my God. So what do you think? I'd, I'd like to go away. I'd like to go away. Away. <laughs> so yes, the road trip begins and we you know we got to cut foot loose. Oh my God. I have no idea what the rest of the lyrics are. Me neither. Woo! I don't think they knew any of the lyrics to this song. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, no. No, not you, no. I was trying to scare your little boy. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was just trying to scare your little boy, not you. <laughs> Every one of her little suits. Oh, my it's God. It's very true Beverly Hills. Yes. In that there is an outfit for every occasion. Yes. Which is, you know, how I like to live my life. But post-its. Post-its. Oh, my God. What if we, like, invented post-its? <laughs> I still, I mean, her dream where she, like... The extended dream, dream sequence. sequence. It took me off guard for a right. moment. Because you're um, like, wait, did I misremember this? Does... When, when she starts giving the glue recipe, well, it's... the viscosity of right. you really and want to get thought, the thermal what? temperature up yeah. to the... Ordinarily, when you make glue, first you need to thermoset your resin. You mix in a um, epoxide, any simple oxygenated adhesive. You can raise the viscosity by adding a complex glucose derivative during the emulsification process. Loved that. That really resonated with me too because I have such vivid dreams where like stuff like that happens where I'll be like, I'll wake up and I'll be like, oh God, but what was it? Let me just remember exactly this. I knew the formula. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. But yeah, this extended dream sequence that it starts and, and you're kind of fooled. You know, sure. it's the sea of pastels, you know, everyone in there in black. Yeah. And it, there's little touches that, because um, the movie's already, oh. what? No, I just got disappointed that it was in the dream sequence that all of the egg girls had their matching drinks. Yeah, well, yeah, but that, but that's what I'm saying. There's so many little choices in the dream, yeah. but the movie's already pretty outrageous. Right. That it doesn't come off as a total insane right. joke until it does. Yes, um, yes. But like, yes, their, their drinks matching their, their dresses, the her knowing the glue recipe, and then the, are you gonna get hit by like that my limo? limo. Whoa, rolling whoa, and rolling and then hitting whoa, the fucking whoa. antenna in the back. And then when they get in the limo, there's an echo. Oh, oh my God. God. They put like reverb on good, it. It was good. really making me laugh. Alan Cummings' creepy Twilight face, and you're like, "What is this?" It was giving me very like behind the candelabra vibes of like, yes. "Oh, he's one of you know uh, Liberace's boyfriends or something." What, like they've been dating he, for five one years. Of his and boys. Some of the, the the makeups really starting to take over, or not the makeup, the plastic surgery. Yeah, it was scary. It was. It was I a lot. I actually have no memory of this from previous viewings. I don't know why. Like, I was like, my, what? What's this? What's happening? Oh, my God. Uh, maybe it's because it just didn't phase me at the time. Like, sure. I was like, oh, she gave him a new face, whatever. But, like, watching it now, I'm like, oh, my God, what's happening? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Why is he some creepy vampire person? Well, then he goes out the the sunroof. Like, he, whoosh. Well, like a vampire. Yeah. He's like, wee. And he's just gone. gone. And you're like, where'd he go? He flew away. Let's go. We got to get in there. Okay. I forgot my top. I couldn't find my top. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't find my top. 
I was saying that I really want that to be a meme for like gay Twitter. Where it's just like, you know. I couldn't find my top. Right, me and Fire Island. I couldn't find my top. <laughs> and that has multiple meanings. Well, sure. Because it's like a shirtless guy and he couldn't find his top. Both tops. Love it. That would have been great in, I almost said Pride and Prejudice, but yeah. um, Fire Island. That would have been great in Fire Island. Oh my God, I couldn't find, I find my, my top. top. <laughs> so then it really, you know, breaks apart. And now it's 70 years in the future. And oh, that's it, right. And death becomes her suddenly. Yes. And she's in this red floor length dress and the old makeup and all of this stuff. And just, no, I'm the Rhoda and you're the Mary. No, no I'm, I'm the, the Mary. Mary. I'm the I'm Mary. Mary. Not until you admit that I'm the Mary and you're the Rhoda. I'm the Mary. I see, I always wanted to be Rhoda. So mm. this conversation was confusing to me. Sure, there you go. Rhoda was like independent, rad, wore like head scarves. Her apartment was more fabulous. She was just like not goody two shoes. You know, she was fab. Right. Did, uh, did you watch Mary Tyler Moore? Yeah, okay. So. I mean, I've seen. I mean, don't get me wrong. Bits here and there. Mary but... Tyler Moore is great. Yeah, but course. I was always like, when are we going to Rhoda's, Rhoda's apartment? Yeah, love it. No, because she's all the colors. I'm into it. Yeah. But them fighting over who's the Mary. No, I'm cuter. That's like, I guess, fighting over who's Laverne and who's Shirley. Oh, I thought you could say who's Romeo and who's Michelle. Well, that's true, too. I always wanted to be Laverne. Yeah, the Laverne's sass. so much more fun. <laughs> the sass. Yeah. Oh, wow. Three kids. God, you must feel really tied down. <laughs> wow. Three kids. God, you must feel really tied down. Loved it. I am fulfilled. <laughs> line reading of that yeah. oh oh wow wow you must, you be, must really be really tied down yeah are you a big tv news anchor woman now no i don't even watch tv anymore my priorities have changed since i became a mommy at least we're not the ones that got fat oh my god we're pregnant, pregnant you, you half wit <laughs> i did love that the main purple girl's married name ended up being christy christensen oh sure I realized at a certain point, I was like, why hasn't there been a Rue and Michelle's High School Reunion sure. episode of Drag Race? There probably has. I don't, I don't, I, I don't know. I have, lo I've, I don't, <laughs> my, I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised if someone was like, it was in this episode. Yeah. But yes, if they haven't, they should. Right? Like what, as one of those acting things and whatever, yeah. and you can have Michelle show up or whatever, you know, like. Get, uh, get um, Lisa Kudrow. And I almost <gasps> said, um, I almost said Mina Suvari because. I, that really, their names were really... Mira Sorvino. And Mina, Mina Subari. It's a sure. lot. Sure. It's a lot. Maybe it was when she got old. There was a certain point where Lisa Kudrow's makeup looked very vampiric. And I was kind of yes. like, oh. It I'm... was very, um, I'm the bride of Dracula, Bram Stoker, Gary yeah. Oldman. But then I was here for like a Lisa Kudrow movie where she's a vampire. No, I, but I think it might turn into vamps and I don't know if I want that. I don't want that, but it... I feel like Lisa Kudrow could make it work. And you know, um, Mira Sorvino, okay, I nailed it. Yeah. I shouldn't have introduced it, now it's bad, uh, was really giving me Carol uh, King. Yes. Carol Kane, damn it, what is happening? <laughs> Carol Kane and Princess Bride. I get that. She was so transformed in the old makeup. I was like, wow, that's Mira Sorvino, crazy. Yeah. Mina Suvari, crazy. No, no. <laughs> Romy here invented post-its. You did not? Yeah, I did. You did not? Yeah, I, well, who did then? A guy named Art Fry from the 3M Corp. We started in business school. No, <laughs> you didn't do that. Yeah, I love it right, immediately. What are you talking about? We learned about that in business school. Like, yeah, some guy at 3M. <laughs> what? <laughs> but they learn that they should just be true to themselves. Yes, and they come out in their fabulous Their fashion. iconic yes. blue and pink, which is always funny to me that they didn't have the same dresses on the cover. They're that different. is true, yeah. Well, yeah. I think... Um, Lisa Kudrow's is the same, but... It might be similar, but yeah. Uh, Mira Sorvino is... Is, is, is a um, different pinky, yeah. Is blue in the... Maybe because... Well, hers is blue with like a, a Star Trek symbol? I was reading about that, and I guess they designed it, and it was super Star Trek-y, and Mira Sorvino is a huge Trekkie, oh. and she was like, that one. I love it. How about that one? What the hell is your problem, Christy? Why are you always such a nasty bitch? You're a bad person with an ugly heart, and we don't give a flying fuck what you think. <laughs> I don't care if you like us, because we don't like you. You're a bad person with an ugly heart, and we don't give a flying fuck what you think. Yes. yes. <laughs> it is a good flip the table moment, you know, just... <sighs> I was also thinking at a certain point in watching this that I would love a Romeo and Michelle musical. It probably exists. I mean, maybe somewhere, but like yeah. a real one. Okay, like a... Kinky Boots went sure. to Broadway. You know, they've done that a million times. I would like an original Broadway production. It's not based on a film. That's um, kind of the history of 
you know, they, they go back and forth. They make sure, but movies the, out of musicals and Lately, short. it's been very, hey, that was sort of a popular IP 20 years ago. Let's make it into a musical. A little bit. A little bit, yes. Mal- Spider-Man, the musical, yeah. There's a lot. But I'm sure there's original ones, too. Orpheus, there was something, or Morpheus, or... Morbius? No. There was something. Morbin time. Oh, boy. <laughs> Morbius Twitter is a really fun place to oh, yeah. be. Well, they, they, they memed them back into theaters thinking that they were popular. Yeah. <laughs> no, Sony, we were all busy that weekend. I promise we'll go back. <laughs> Janine, just the way she says stuff when she comes up to them. Wait, you guys thought I was cool? I thought you were, you know, whatever. Right. I really thought you guys had it made in high school. You with your long hair and your long legs, walking on your legs, flipping your hair. Walking on your legs. legs. and all the, Flipping wh- your hair. Flipping your hair and your legs. <laughs> she has such great delivery. Oh, well, oh my God, do I love her. Yeah. Okay, Toby, fuck off. Heather. Fuck off, Toby. <laughs> it really hurts my feelings. I hurt your feelings. Yeah, all the time. Tremendous. That's tremendous. Go get your stupid yearbook. I would be happy to sign it. Okay. Well, then, of course, the, the, I think maybe the most iconic thing of Janine Garofalo from this movie for me is <laughs> with the beer and the... <laughs> just well, great physical it's so good. No, I delivery. Think her last line in the movie is my favorite. This dress exacerbates the genetic betrayal that is my legacy. <laughs> I actually kind of liked the dress. Oh, yes. It just wasn't her. No, it wasn't. Well, and the styling was not her. It was not, you yes, know. Yes, but, yeah. uh, you know, we got that line out of it, so yes, I'm here for it. Why absolutely. isn't she in any of the Adams Family movies, <gasps> though? Yes. Mm-hmm. Also, Something where has she out. been? Why, why is she She's not? She's in stuff. Okay. She shows up here and there. Okay, good. She's a stand-up. Love it. I've never wanted to be married because I don't want to be forced to hide purchases, which seems to be the bedrock <laughs> of every long-term relationship, I think, right? How do I get this item into the home? without my partner realizing I've just breached our unspoken contract about what can and can't be purchased. Oh my God, we didn't talk about, I think the most iconic thing in this movie, Uh the time after time dance. Oh my God, how did we not even talk about it? Definitely recreated with my friends in our bedroom. Oh, I love that. Traded off who played Alan Cumming. I mean, yes, that's what happened. The legs up, yeah, it's great. Insane, love it. The two, there's two dance numbers because they dance together, the two of them. Let's just go dance together. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. There are no guys here. Right. (laughs) They have such a great Night at the Roxbury Club. It was very Night at the Roxbury. And I was, yes, I was waiting for Chris Catan and Will Ferrell to show up. Absolutely. I wouldn't have been surprised. If they are in the same universe, that makes sense to me. You know what? They might be soulmates. Honestly. Like, if you told me, like, oh, these were both SNL skits that, like, you know, somehow revolved in the same, you know, like, yeah. oh, yeah, and then they met one night at the Roxbury. Yes. Yeah. Here for it. I do want to go shopping at Romeo Michelle's, though, by the way. Absolutely. Obsessed with the store. Yeah. Have a very Romeo and Michelle day. Have a Romeo and Michelle day. Let's fold scarves. <laughs> <laughs> they don't make these movies anymore. Like, mid-budget comedies. Yeah. Particularly starring two women. I, I miss I miss this level of movies. These um, are my favorite level of movies. Yeah. And I, you know, I've thought about this a lot. Okay. We don't need to go into a dissertation about how Disney is destroying theatrical. Oh my God. Um, I mean, it's wild. And, and James Cameron. And TV. James Avatar. Cameron started it. With Avatar? <laughs> Way before Avatar. Uh, Titanic. Oh, sure. But like the well, idea... Then, then we can blame George Lucas. No, because, well... Or Steven Spielberg. I definitely blame Steven Spielberg for the current state of sharks. Oh, well, certainly that. Poor, so many shark deaths are on Steven Spielberg's head. Hands? He should... Hands. Hands. Lens. The blood is on his hands. He, if he doesn't have some sort of shark foundation, he should. Oh, he absolutely should. That's a good point. No, but like, there was a whole thing about how Titanic, right? They, it almost bankrupted. They had to do a joint venture mm, of Fox. And then and, it made it and, back. And, then it, right, and it was like, oh, if we spend $300 million on a movie, but it grosses a billion, that's so much more mm. the, better than making, you know, spending $30 million on a movie. I don't think this costs that much. Oh, no, I would doubt Whatever, it. you know, it's 10 to 30 and making $50 million or whatever right, it was. Right. And so there was just like that focus on tentpole. And now that's all that Disney does, right? It's just Marvel movies. Yeah. Or Star, Star Wars. Wars. <laughs> but they don't have Spider-Man, not yet. <laughs> well, just wait. Oh, yeah. They don't have Morbius, not yet. <laughs> that's fine. 
I think part of the problem is that like the gap that these movies would have lived in yeah. is now on streaming, right? It's like straight to Netflix or, right. or HBO Max or whatever. And actually, HBO Max is doing better than Netflix well, the, the thing in terms is, of the quality. Um, those places, I think, would do better if they curated more. There's too yes. many options. There's too many options. Um, there's too much, and you don't know. And then you watch the first 20 minutes of something, and you're like, that's terrible. I'm going to turn it off. Yeah. Uh, so there's that. There, well, there is, and that's what I was getting at too. Was that it was like when there was a theatrical release planned for a movie, right. there was a certain threshold that was required of development of like we have to make sure that the script is right before we spend thirty million dollars making right. this movie. Right. And now the streamers are like, I don't know, just make it, whatever. We'll see how it goes. We'll put, we'll put it on. People will watch it. I, you know, it, I feel like the barrier to entry is lower. Yeah. Which is in some ways a good thing, but it'll come back around. I think so. But I do miss these movies. Yeah. Long the, story short. Yeah, long story short, yes. I'm trying to think of, there aren't a ton of little character actors who, if they showed up today in a movie, I'd go, I gotta go see that. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, who's Alan Cumming now? Not that Alan Cumming doesn't have a career right now, but you know no, what but I mean? No, like, like the younger, new Alan Cumming. Who's Janine Garofalo now? Who's Richard E. Grant? Who's um, Parker Posey? Who are Sandra Bernhardt? Who are these, like, quirky, weird, you know, actors? You're like, I'm gonna go see that. I think we have a few. I think Bo and Yang, sure. I would go, I mean, I would show up sure. to see something, you know, in a similar vibe of like, oh, he's quirky and smart and funny and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, What's he in other than Fire Island? I think there's more stuff coming. Okay. You know, okay. he's up okay. and coming. It's happening. It's happening. Um, do you, have you watched Hacks yet? No. Okay. So, did you, you never watched Broad City either? No. Okay. <laughs> So there's some there's some people from there that are like involved now in making things. I'm sure they exist. I'm yeah. just like, huh. Uh, I'm behind the. Times. Well, maybe you need to do some work in getting in with the new people. Nah, I'm just gonna go watch pre-code movies. <laughs> Great. They're like, seventy-four minutes, and Cary Grant's there, frequently. Hard to argue with that. Myrna Loy. I'm here for it. Come on, Joan Blondell. Get out of here. Oh, you want to go see the new Dakota Johnson movie? No, no I don't. No, I'm okay. I'm going to go watch an old Joan Blondell movie. <laughs> I'm fine. Anyway. Anyway. Um, Romy and Michelle. Romy and Michelle. Absolutely adore this movie. I'm going to go bust out that CD. Yes. Thank you so much, Jason, for making us rewatch this. And cheers yes. to Janine Garofalo. Absolutely. Oh. But obviously also, I mean. Well, everybody, but, but, but Janine. <laughs> cheers. I am not Joe. I am not Ruth Buzzy standing here. I am no Ruth Buzzy standing here.